Freddie and Ashley, who are joining us today. Uh, they both donated their kidneys to um, someone who needed a kidney transplant. And so uh, really excited that they're both going to be here to share their stories today about what they did, why they did it, um, who they did it for, um, and uh, how they're doing today. Um, they are only, they, these are two people, there's only about 100 people who donate a kidney um, each year in BC. So it's a rare thing indeed. And so really appreciate that you both will be here to share your story with us today. Um, I'm going to, we're going to tell their story or they're going to tell their own stories, Pecha Kucha style, which means it's 20 seconds each uh, for 20 slides. And uh, I'm not going to pull them off the stage if they go a teensy bit over on any one slide. Um, but so it's about seven minutes each, I think it works out to be. And then uh, we're going to be doing Q&A with um, those of you joining us today. And you'll be able to do that through the Q&A chat box. So Freddie and Ashley, thanks so much for joining us today. Freddie, you are up first. All right, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. My name is Freddie Marsh, and I'm a volunteer with BC Transplant. And back in 2015, I donated one of my kidneys to a friend of mine. So I'm gonna to talk to you about the whole uh, process, how it started and what life is like now. So uh, this is my partner, Dave, just to give you a little bit of background about me. We've been together for 22 years, married for 12. Dave's actually American, he's from uh, California, but we've been living in New Westminster for the last 18 years. I would say we live pretty modestly, but our one big splurge is we love to travel. So Dave's actually been to 68 countries already. I'm right behind him at 56 countries. And actually a year from now, we've got a, a trip planned to uh, Europe. So really looking forward to that. But let's get to the kidney donation. So how did it come about? Well, the story of that is I found um, online that the Boston Terrier Rescue was looking for foster homes for their dogs. And at that point, this was back in 2007. And at that point, Dave and I were looking at uh, either adopting a dog or fostering. So we contacted them. And the other person at the end of that was a woman named Anna Maria. And we became instant friends. Um, they had a, a foster dog for us. This is Bitsy. We had Bitsy uh, for quite a few years. Uh, we were what you call a foster fail because we ended up falling in love with her. And uh, we kept in touch with Anna Maria over the years. I knew that she had some uh, medical problems, but I wasn't exactly sure what it was until we got together for lunch in 2014 when she was telling me that she had a rare disease. She was in kidney failure. She needed, uh, she was on dialysis and she needed a kidney and nobody in her family was a match. So I don't know how many married people are out there, but I have a terrible habit of volunteering Dave for all kinds of things. So I asked Anna Maria what uh, the first step was and she said it had to be a, a same blood type, um, O positive. I said, I think Dave's O positive, but Dave will, Dave will do it. So I came home from lunch that day. I said, Dave, I think I really overdid it. I donated one of your organs. Well, he wasn't O positive and it ends up I was, I had no idea, but I ended up getting a blood test I was O positive. I told Anna Maria that I would love to uh, donate one of my kidneys. So it started a year of testing. Um, so they, it was like a, 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 like a medical, like what do you do once a year when you get your medical review done? It was like that on steroids, basically. They tested me for everything. They wanted to make sure I had two healthy kidneys and uh, also had to meet with a therapist as well to make sure that I was uh, mentally uh, up for uh, going through with the transplant. So everything, we passed all the tests, I guess, and about a year later, uh, May 11th, 2015, at uh, VGH, we had our transplant. And uh, they were able to do it laparoscopically, which was great. So they took one of my healthy kidneys, put it into Anna Maria, and uh, it was uh, remarkable at how quickly she started feeling better. Uh, having a healthy uh, kidney. You might be able to tell from that gate, uh, glazed look in my eyes, they had me on some really good medication. That's the one thing I was a little bit worried about going in is what was the pain level gonna be like? Didn't need to worry about that. It was definitely uncomfortable because it was a major surgery, but there wasn't really 
uh, pain so much, it was more uncomfortableness. And I was only in the hospital for two nights. I was sent home, that's our other rescue dog, Ralphie. She just stuck with me right by my side the whole time during my recuperation. I was off work part-time for two weeks and I was back uh, full-time after four weeks after the surgery. So, you know, the uh, process was very quick for me uh, getting back to how I was before. Anna Maria just started feeling better immediately. It was so great to see having a healthy kidney. She no longer had to be on dialysis. She started doing things that she hadn't been able to do for years. And I'd get random calls from her just saying, you know what, I'm just making dinner. I've got ABBA um, on the radio and I'm dancing around the kitchen making dinner. I just wanted to thank you. And what an incredible feeling that is to know that you've made a difference for somebody. About four months later, we were invited to her and her husband's vow renewal in Tofino, which was really amazing to be there. And I tried surfing for the first time. Keep in mind, this is less than four months after the transplant, I was already surfing in Tofino. And that's how it's been for me. Really, there's been no negative side effects to my health. I can do everything that I could before. I have the same energy level. This is my friend and coworker, Amanda, when we did the sun run in 2019. Um, so really there's been no uh, negative effect on my health whatsoever, which is uh, kind of nice to, to know. Uh, sadly, uh, we did lose Anna Maria in July of 2016. Um, she passed away from a illness uh, that was unrelated to the kidney transplant. Uh, Anna Maria was an amazing person, as you can tell with her uh, work with volunteer with animals, and she is missed by so many people. Uh, a few years ago, I contacted the BC transplant um, to see if they had any volunteer opportunities, and I started volunteering. So this is, of course, back before the pandemic when we used to be able to do things in person, and I love that. And it was so great just to spread word about organ donation and connect with other organ, organ donors, recipients, and donor families. I really enjoyed my time volunteering. And one of my favorite times of the year was Operation Popcorn. And this was an opportunity for us to thank healthcare workers and pharmacists across the province for all their work that they do around transplant with, uh, with some popcorn and some treats. So I really miss that. I'm hoping that comes back very soon as well. I did want to share some information. Uh, there's currently over 700 people in BC waiting for an organ transplant, and anyone can register. You just go to the transplant.bc.ca website that's at the bottom of the screen. It literally takes two minutes to check, and if you're not registered, you can sign up, and it's really important to make sure you let your family know about your decision. And how is life now? Life is great. Um, of course, I miss Anna Maria terribly, but as far as my health and, um, you know, we're, we're traveling again, life is good. I haven't volunteered day for anything lately, so I'm in his good books, I think, right now. And uh, I would definitely recommend uh, donating uh, if you have the opportunity. That's my quick seven minutes, and uh, I'll stop sharing my screen. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, Freddie. Thanks for sharing your story. I think we have some questions that we'll ask you after Ashley's had a chance. Um, definitely looking at those photos uh, from Operation Popcorn. I think we all miss those days when we could be doing things like even like this in person. So hopefully we'll get back to that uh, not too long from now. Um, okay, Ashley, um, we're gonna turn it over to you. I'm gonna share my screen because I'm gonna share um, your slideshow here just one second uh, there it is hopefully everyone can see that and um, Ashley I'm going to turn off my video and hand it over to you <laughs> okay um, hello I'm Ashley Hubert um, thank you so much for having me I can't see myself but hopefully you guys can see me um, in November of 2015, I was invited to a Facebook group by a high school friend, Shane. Um, I hadn't seen him since their graduation in 2003. And the group was for his wife, Jacqueline. Um, she was 29 years old, the same age as I was at the time, and she needed a kidney transplant. Next slide. <laughs> Thank you. During her third pregnancy, um, she had started to experience complications. And shortly after giving birth, she was diagnosed with polycystic kidney disease. Um, because she was able-bodied enough though, she was able to do 
peritoneal, I hope I pronounced that right, um, dialysis at home, but she was hooked up to the machine for about nine hours every night. Uh, and this is an image of just one month of her dialysis supplies. So as I had read about her and her needing of a kidney, I realized that if I was in her position, um, I would hope that a stranger would donate a kidney to me. And I knew that I was deserving of that gift. So I realized that no one should die if someone can save them. And I wrote to Shane um, that same day and I told him that I'd like to think that people would help me if I needed this kind of help. So the only right thing to do is to do the same. Um, Immediately, I started getting tested. I, I contacted the transplant center and started getting tested. Um, the team explained to me that only the healthiest people are approved. And like Freddie said, there's so much testing. There's so much blood drawn, so many tests. Um, so the team explained that only the healthiest people are able to donate. And as donation is supposed to lessen the burden of the medical system, as well as, as help people live normal lives, I was able to let go of any fears I had, knowing that it was in the best interest of the medical system and doctors that I would have a healthy life afterwards. On the first day of our cross matching, Jacqueline and I decided to meet. Um, oh, my notes are different. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. It's okay if it's the wrong one. I might have put them wrong. Go to the cross matching one. <laughs> um, on the day of our first blood uh, cross matching, Jacqueline and I decided to meet, which is really exciting because um, I was already set to donate to her. Cross matching is basically where they mix blood together um, and to see to make sure that um, there's not a reaction. But a couple of days later, I got a phone call that the cross matching didn't work. Our charts had actually been misread from the very beginning and we weren't a direct match. So the transplant team suggested that I think about paired exchange and call them back. But as I had just met Jackie a couple of days before, I told them that it really didn't matter who had my actual kidney and that we could definitely go through with paired exchange. Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> okay, that's the right slide. <laughs> um, so basically I would donate on Jackie's behalf to a stranger and she would receive his kidney from another stranger. So we went into the paired exchange system at the beginning of July, 2016, and we immediately got a chain. Um, our surgery was set for the beginning of August. So it was really quick. Um, this is an image of the actual kidney that I was going to donate. I took a picture of the, the x-ray of it. <laughs> so the hardest part for me was figuring out what to do about my business as I'm self-employed. Um, I work really physical jobs and I had to take off eight weeks to reduce risk of hernia. Um, my house painting business was easy to shut down, but my dog walking business was a lot harder as we had the same clients every day and I didn't have an employee at the time. So I made this really cute poster and spam social media, but never ended up finding anyone. So in the end, I decided just to take the loss and shut everything down and hope that all my clients would come back when I was finally able to work again. Um, my surgery was set for five days before Jackie would receive her new kidney. Um, it was my first surgery ever, and I was definitely nervous, quite nervous. Um, but I was really blown away that as I counted back from 10 when I was in the surgery room, that I only remember getting to seven before someone was calling me a name and waking me up again. Um, while I was in the recovery room, they let my partner in, and I asked him to take this picture and post it on my social media to let everyone know that I was alive. So I was pretty drugged up in this picture, too. <laughs> The next couple of days were rougher than I expected. I was in a lot of pain. Um, I don't think I was using the drugs, right? And it hurt, <laughs> but my surgery was also done laparoscopically. So I knew I would heal really quick after the first week of pain. Um, and now I only have four really small scars on my belly um, and they're almost invisible. I spent the next three nights in hospital with this stuffed kidney that a client gave me. And when I got home, I was slow moving, but much more comfortable. Um, eating was hard. I didn't really have an appetite for a, appetite for a couple of days, um, but I had lots of people come to visit me and lots of flowers delivered, so I was distracted. Uh, and I spent a lot of time just snuggling my dog in recovery. Oh, that's an image that I, I don't think I updated it. <laughs> that's my dog and I. <laughs> there we go. This is the next one. <laughs> Thank you. The best part about surgery was that even though I felt really terrible for the first week, Jackie felt incredible. Um, my kidney function had all of a sudden been cut in half and Jackie's was dramatically increased. So she felt fantastic. 
um, that definitely helped me get through the hard days, seeing how amazing she was feeling and knowing that my kidney would eventually pick up the slack and compensate for the loss of the donated one. Um, once we were both out of the hospital, we decided to raise some money for the BC Kidney Foundation walk. We all dressed up in costumes um, and danced our way through the walk. That's myself, my partner, and Jackie and her family. Um, one of the highlights of the day, oh, this always makes me cry, um, and probably the whole donation is that one of their children asked for my phone number. <laughs> I need a second. Um, and when I looked over her shoulder, she had written down my name as my hero, which was obviously very lovely. <laughs> um, okay, during my eight weeks off, a friend from Malta had called to say that she was getting married in the next month because her family was visiting. And since I was already off work, and by this time I was starting to feel better, I decided I should probably go to Italy and Malta for a month and attend the wedding as it was going to be in a palace, as you can see by that photo of the gold and teal room. Um, so I called my team to get clearance for travel and most importantly swimming uh, and five weeks after my surgery I was boarding a plane to travel by myself. So since my donation my life is pretty normal and I'm super grateful for that. I do have days where I feel tired, um, I have fatigue and it's, it can be frustrating but for the most part my donation hasn't changed anything in my life. Um, this is proof, this is my, <laughs> my movement tracker and I logged 38 kilometers in an 11 hour painting day during one of our heat waves this summer. So I obviously haven't been slowed down too much. <laughs> My connection with Jackie and seeing her get her life back is incredible. We don't see each other nearly enough and we blame work and COVID and all the normal things. But whenever we do get to connect, it's like we saw each other yesterday. Um, donating a kidney kind of breaks down barriers <laughs> really quickly. And there's nothing that we don't feel comfortable talking about and sharing. Uh, and even though she doesn't actually have my kidney, she likes to joke that it's mine and calls it my kidney. So I'm five years post-transplant now, um, post-donation, and um, I still feel a huge sense of accomplishment, which is really wonderful um, in deciding to donate and gratitude for being able to provide this gift and for my own health moving forward. Um, I love volunteering with BC Transplant. I've been doing it for a couple years. Um, I get to share my story and encourage others uh, and it helps to remind me that I was part of something bigger than myself and that also feels great. Um, another way that my transplant has changed my life is that it's easier to make some big and sometimes crazy decisions. Uh, oh, I lost my place. <laughs> um, this summer I decided to make a dream of mine come true and I bought myself a horse which is pretty crazy. Um, it also, the transplant team has made it very clear to me that transplant should not change my life and that I should go on living and enjoying the activities that make me happy. So I definitely make sure to do that as much as I can. We travel a lot. And this is a photo. Sorry, Ashley. I think, did we oh. lose you for a sec? Oh, there, you're back. Oh. Oh no! <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't know why. <laughs> um, I don't know where you lost me, but this is um, uh, this is a photo. <laughs> sorry, I'm not fat world. This is a photo of um, uh, scuba diving with bull sharks in Fiji, um, 100 feet underwater, cageless. Uh, basically, my transplant team has made it very clear that nothing should change in my life and that I should go on living and loving life and. So we do things like this, travel and scuba dive with sharks. <laughs> um, thank you so much for sharing this time with me and listening to the story about my donation. <laughs> thank you very much, Ashley. Actually, you can leave your camera on and Freddie, maybe you can come back on as well because we are going to open up for a couple of questions. Um, I love that last photo of you, Ashley. Ashley and Freddie have both been part of our photo campaign um, with, uh, with various volunteers. And um, Freddie, I think, well, pre-pandemic photo shoot, and then Ashley and one that we just did recently. So excited to be able to share some of those photos with people. So um, now we have some time for questions. If there's anyone who um, would like to, there's a Q&A uh, panel in the Zoom, sort of at the bottom of your, um, your computer screen, um, depending, I guess, on how you're joining us. Um, and so if you want to ask questions, you're welcome to pop them in there. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you have comments for uh, Freddie or Ashley as well, you can pop them in as well. 
Um, I thought I would just get started when ask both of you a quick question um, about the time that you guys were considering donation. Um, and maybe we'll just start with, um, with Ashley, maybe with you first. How did uh, your partner react when you told him what you were, that you were planning to donate your kidney? Um, and, and I guess, well, I'll start with that one first. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was fine. He was great. Um, I don't think that he would push back if I said I was going to do something anyways. We kind of have that relationship. Um, he's trying to talk to me in the other room because <laughs> he's watching this. Um, but he was very supportive. He, he knew that um, it was something that I really wanted to do. And he, I think he had a bit of nerves, especially when we went to um, have the meeting with my surgeon. Um, there was a little bit of like, you know, what's going to happen and how is this going to affect our life, but he was very supportive from the very beginning. And what about you, Freddie? How did your partner react? Uh, well, I mean, you, I guess you already had uh, volunteered his kidney <laughs> to start, but when you said you were going to go for it, you know, what was the, was there any, what was his yeah, I think he was probably a little relieved that he was off the hook and it was me, but he was really supportive. Um, we both kind of did the research together and when we found out that they really make sure, you know, with the testing to make sure that you're super healthy and you've got really two good um, kidneys. Um, and he's kind of a science guy anyway. So he, you know, did a lot of research. And so once we found that out, he was uh, behind me the whole way. And actually my entire family and, and pretty much all my friends, I only had a couple people that were like, are you sure you want to do this? But for the most part, everybody was really supportive uh, about the idea of, of going through with that. Yeah, that was actually going to be my next question. Just if there was anyone in either of your lives that was against the donation um, and, you know, how they brought it up to you and, and you know, how you overcame that. Because um, I imagine not everyone was immediately on board to support you, potentially. Uh, maybe, Freddie, if you want to go first and then Ashley. Sure. I just have uh, two friends, um, not super close friends, but friends that just said, you know, are you, you've done your research, we love you, we don't want anything to happen, we're worried that you're going to only be left with one kidney, what happened? So, you know, once I kind of um, told them about the research that I had done behind it, and the, the, the great screening that goes behind it, I think that put their minds at ease, and they never brought it up again. So it was, it was never a problem after that. Um, yeah, I, I had a family member actually who told me that they didn't agree with it, um, which was a whole conversation. Um, basically though, what I said is that if I was in the position to need a kidney and none of my family or friends could donate for whatever reason, would they turn down a stranger's kidney for me? Would they say that they didn't agree with the decision for a stranger to save my life if it was me that needed a kidney or their life if it was them. Um, they were pretty quiet after that. <laughs> but that was the only person. <laughs> Great. Um, and what about for both of you, Ashley, did you have any moment of hesitation um, as you were, you know, went through the journey? Was there, I know you said you were nervous before the surgery, which I think, I mean, that, that makes sense for anyone going into surgery probably, but, um, were there any other, any times along the way that you, you hesitated? No, not for me. I had always thought that kidney trend, like donation could only be to a direct family member or like a close friend. Um, if I had known that I could have donated to somebody that I didn't know before, I would have done it years before. Um, so only the night before when you can't eat anything and you can only have clear fluids and I was so hungry. <laughs> I was like really just like emotional because I was so hungry and the day was coming up and I think that I kind of got like in my head. Um, and then the morning of I was really nervous and like that cold, like when you're cold, you've got that like anxious energy and you're freezing cold. Um, but then they give you that heated, like air heated blanket thing. That's so great. And, uh, and everybody was really nice. It was fine. So not, not anything that was really crazy, just a little bit of nerves at the beginning or right before. Yeah. Same, same thing. Oddly enough, I had no hesitation whatsoever until the morning of, and when I was in the, the, the beautiful gown that they give you and all that, and you know, they're ready to wheel me in. I got a text or an email from my sister and she was just saying, we love you. We're proud of you. And then, for some reason, that kind of 
made me think, oh, geez, what have I got myself into? But by then, you know, I guess I could have backed out if I wanted to, but I told Anna Marie I was going through with it. And then it was like a couple minutes later, I was doing that count back from 10 that Ashley was talking about. I think I made it to about seven as well. And then it was all over. So just that one kind of right before, but I think that's just natural nerves. Wow, amazing, thanks. Um... Yeah, I think it's hard to, for people to imagine donating kitty and so many. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a hard thing to do. And uh, it's amazing that you didn't have a lot of moments of hesitation, I think. So, um, so uh, Ashley, you know, your job is demanding. You said that you showed us that screen of during the heat wave, how many steps you did. <laughs> and uh, so, so you haven't, um, how often do you have to go get checkups and do that kind of thing, like to make sure that your health is, is there, is there sort of a regular schedule for you now? Thank you for reminding me to do my blood work. <laughs> I have blood work sitting on the fridge. <laughs> um, they send me a panel for blood work once a year. Um, that's like a urinalysis and blood work. Uh, that's all that I have to do. And then I have, I finally got a family doctor. So it gets sent to him and to the team. Uh, at my hospital, the transplant team, but it's just once a year, as long as you're healthy, I think. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Freddie, how, yeah, okay. And same I was gonna here. say, how are you feeling now, Freddie, too? Are you, you know, is there any sort of in thing that you can't do now? There's oh, the only one little thing is if I get a headache, I'm not supposed to take ibuprofen because apparently that can be harder on your kidney, but I, so I take Tylenol. That is the only difference in my life uh, now than what it was before the uh, transplant. So not, not a big deal at all. Okay, great. Um, and Freddie, you know, I know Anna Maria has passed. I'm sorry to hear that she passed away. Um, looking back on it now, um, would you still have donated knowing this outcome? Yes, I get asked that a lot. Actually, people ask me that because she had the kidney for just over a year. But it was an incredible year. Like you saw some of the pictures of Anna Maria enjoying her best life and, you know, having that weekend at Tofino. And there was just, you know, she had a really great year. And I do, would do not, um, you know, I would do it again uh, for less time if I could. And Ashley, I know it's, it's a different situation, but I'm curious if uh, you would, you know, do you have any regrets? Like, would you change anything about, uh, about, about the process and, and having decided to donate? No, not at all. I wish I had another kidney. I would donate it. <laughs> well, I do have another kidney. You can't have that one. Um, there's actually a car that I drive by all the time, and it has a decal on the back that says that somebody needs a kidney. And every time I drive past it, I wish I could donate to that person too. So I would definitely do it. Okay, thanks. So I think we're down to, well, we, we scheduled half an hour for this, but I thought maybe I would ask you both one more question. Um, and just curious for both of you, what made you so certain that you were doing the right thing? <laughs> um, because I would take a kidney from someone <laughs> if I needed it. <laughs> like, to be honest, I would, like, I, it's a selfish thing. I would do it. Um, I would take a kidney from a stranger if I needed it. And I just feel like the world should be, I don't know. I just feel like we can all do it or not all of us, but if we can, then we should. And if I would take it, then I need to be willing to give it to. So it just felt right. Yeah, that's a great answer. That's pretty much the same thing that I was <laughs> going to say. So, you know, and just for me, it was a friend and just knowing what an amazing person this was. And, you know, she was dedicating her life to the rescue of animals. And, you know, why wouldn't I, um, if I've got a spare, why, why wouldn't I, I don't know if you're supposed to say spare, but if I've got a, you know, two healthy ones, why not give her one of the healthy ones? So um, yeah, that's the, right away, as soon as I, I knew that it was an option, I knew that that was something I wanted to do to help her. Yeah, awesome, thank you. And uh, before we close, I'll just, um, I did see that there is a comment in um, the box. I just wanted to share it from someone who's following along. Um, and she says, not a question, but your stories are so inspiring. Ashley, the daughter saving you as my hero literally pulled on my heartstrings. The both of you are amazing and are deserving of the title heroes. Thank you for sharing your story. So thanks for that comment um, um, from, from the audience there. 
Um, and yeah, so I think that's that's all we have the time for today. And you know, I reiterate those remarks as well. Thank you so much for sharing your stories and being so open and sharing these are our personal stories, personal things. And um, you know, I think that every you know the thing that val the value that BC Transplant um, that our volunteers have is like really sharing their stories and raising awareness for um, donation, both deceased and living. And because it's Living Donation Kidney Week. Uh, it's a good time for uh, for us to be hearing your stories. Um, as we know, these living kidney transplants wouldn't be possible without people like you who are willing to step forward and actually donate like a literal piece of yourself. So um, it's really amazing and incredible. So uh, thanks for, for sharing those stories today. Um, for all of you watching along, a reminder, it's Living Kidney Donation Week. So you can check out all of our social media channels and um, our website, and BC Reno's website, for any information that you might want to have about living kidney donation. Um, on our website, it's at transplant.bc.ca slash living donation. Um, this, uh, this Lunch and Learn is going to be available um, online afterwards on YouTube, and we'll aim to share it on our Facebook page as well. Um, so that'll probably be available in the next day or two if you want to share that with your friends and family. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. And of course, especially Ashley and Freddie, thank you so much for, for being here today um, and sharing those stories. It's thank a real you. pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.